Hi folks, Pat Healy here for the Laker News. We present to you our video interview series with the main party leaders for the Nova Scotia provincial election. These video interviews are sponsored by Joanne Poulin of EXP Realty. Thanks, Joanne. Now, let's check out the interviews. I'm here with Premier Tim Houston. We're in Beaverbank and we're doing some interviews. So, um, just uh, gonna ask you a few questions here. Sure, happy to, happy to be here. How is the campaign coming along? I've seen you've been to Cape Breton, Bedford, Sackville, here in Beaverbank, East Hanson, Fall River. Yeah, it's, it's been great. Anytime you can get out and speak to Nova Scotians, listen to Nova Scotians, talk about opportunities, and, and be frank about challenges too. It's, it's something I enjoy doing, so it's been good. We've been traveling the province, and we'll get, we'll get across the whole province over the course of this campaign. It's really important to, to, to go and meet people in their communities, and we enjoy doing it. So we're, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's been positive so far. Um, and we'll just keep going. All right. Why did you feel there was a need for an election before the fixed election date that was set for July? Yeah, this is a, an important question. So we were elected in 2021 on health care. Uh, the world has changed since 2021. Uh, obviously, affordability is is uh, it's hard for a lot of people right now. So so we, we're, we're talking in this campaign about lowering HST, lowering personal income taxes, investments in, in infrastructure. Of course, more doctors, more nurses, um, and, and just um, focusing on health care as well. But I thought there was enough kind of new things that Nova Scotians should have their voice on it. So I wanted to, I wanted to give Nova Scotians their voice on what's possible for the future. And the, the other thing that's overriding all this is is there are, you know, that the, there's challenges with the issue uh, with the relationship with Ottawa. I, I don't really think we're getting a full shake on big issues like the, the isthmus, on illegal fishing. Um, there's a whole, ra whole range of things and they've made it pretty clear that well we're in an election year um, it, they wouldn't take us seriously so you know we can't just sit around for seven or eight years seven or eight months and wait for the passage of time so we want to we want to have the election and let Nova Scotians have their say so I think people are responding to the campaign and we we'll just keep moving forward. Okay. This next question has been submitted to us by the Nova Scotia Association of Realtors. Nova Scotians want to own homes, but it is getting increasingly difficult to do so. What will you do to make it easier for Nova Scotian families to buy homes in our community? Yeah, this is uh, this is a big issue. I spoke to some people today here as well that are you know interested in their, their children being able to buy a home. So the, the solution to the housing crisis is more housing. So we you know when we came when we when we first came into government we we, we did a number of policy initiatives. Uh, we looked at provincial crown land to say what's the best use for that land? Is it housing? And when it is, we kind of work with work with nonprofits, work with other organizations to get get housing built. Looked at HRM uh, bylaws to see how we could get projects approved. Uh, there's there's a, a number of things we did. Took the HST off multi-unit, but a number of uh, initiatives to try to make sure that more homes are getting built, um, and and that plan is working. It, it, we're, we're, we're driving off a housing plan that we built after talking to 20,000 Nova Scotians. We put a plan together, the first housing plan this province has seen, and the plan is working right now, and I know it's working uh, because uh, in 2023 we had record housing starts, more housing starts since, since the, the early 80s. So, so we know that there's more to be done, but more housing is coming on the market, and as the supply starts to kind of meet what, what the demand is, it creates opportunities for people. And along the way, we know there are we know there are people, first-time home buyers, um, young families, that are, you know, and others that are first-time home buyers that are trying to get into a home and, and getting the down payment is is difficult. You know, the five percent. So we're, we're we're partnering with the credit unions to come up with a program where you know people would be able to get into a home for with a two percent down down payment and the part and the province will work with the credit unions to make sure that that everything is in place for that so look working on more housing building the housing supply um, that's the solution to the housing crisis so we're focused on that and also recognizing that you know people need opportunities on the financial side what are some of the top three concerns you are hearing as you have traveled through the area of Beaverbank, Fall River and East Hans? Yeah, so provincial politics, uh, obviously healthcare is, is a big part of provincial politics. So, you know, talking to people about what's happening in healthcare, and, and we've made pretty incredible progress in, in healthcare. There are more doctors today, there are more nurses today, there are more access points through pharmacies. In fact, we, we've created almost a million primary care appointment opportunities, a million new ones that didn't exist before our government. So we know there's still work to be done and we're just chatting to people about, about healthcare and about their experience with the system. And actually hearing from a, a lot of people who had 
positive experiences, you know, uh, that had, you know, that maybe their expectations were low, but they had really good care and it was quick. So, so some of those stories, those are important. Uh, education is a, is a big part of the uh, provincial budget. People are talking about um, the school lunch program and how it's helping their family and offering some feedback, maybe on the menu cho choices and, and stuff. But the, but, the, but the fact that we're rolling out free, healthy lunches for, for public school children is a big deal for Nova Scotian families. And so we're talking about that. And I guess the third thing would be around transportation, just the traffic issue. Um, and, and that is something that we're, 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 we're focused on. We're, it's a concern when people are spending time in traffic that they could be spending with their families. Uh, so, so big investments are required in, in more roads, more connector roads, on and off ramps. So these are all, these are all, we've had some great discussions over the last few days in this area. Those are, I guess, probably some of the things that are on, on people's minds and, and I, I love those discussions. Cool. Um, the need for housing is increasing, so it's important to have homes for everyone but with the increased climate crisis and global warming, what would you as Premier do about the increased development that are causing deforestation, infilling of oceans and wetlands and overall destruction of the natural habitat happening in the province? Yeah, I think we just need to be be thoughtful in, in how we plan. So we, we need housing for sure. You know, we, we have we have big issues there and the housing crisis. So we have to be thoughtful. But but it's there's lots of places that it's appropriate to build. Um, and, and we've tried to work with municipalities on that and, and tried to as a, as a province, as a provincial government, look at the land we have and see what's possible. So just be, be thoughtful about it. Um, you know, some some places are appropriate for, for housing, but but some aren't. But we just need to be honest about that discussion. But we, we need to build housing. And so we need to we need to we can't lose sight of that. Um, but we, we can't do it in a, in a destructive way. So finding the balance is a, is a key part of governing. And I think we've been able to find that, find that balance in, in many situations and we'll just work harder in others. Not everyone is able to own a car for affordability or age, disability or illness reasons. How will you build public transit that can be used by isolated, carless people throughout Nova Scotia? Yeah, this is a, certainly an important discussion that's come up in this in this area as well. So we, we know through the uh, Joint Regional Transportation Authority that we, we created, our that's an initiative that our government did to look at moving people around. And what I would call the livability of the province, you know, so you can so you can move move around in a way that meets your lifestyle and is and is appropriate. So that under that transportation authority, we're looking at a number of options. We're, we're finally going to bring the, the high speed rail uh, discussion in this province to a head. That's been something that's been talked about for a long time. We're going to do a feasibility to stu study to see can we do it or not. We have to bring it to a head because it's 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 time to do it. So those are the types of things we're looking at. Obviously, we'll work with the municipalities on other transportation uh, options and, and, and opportunities. But I think the main concern that people have around public transportation is the reliability of it. So we need to be focused on making sure that the system is reliable. Um, if, if the bus is going to be a half hour late today and 25 minutes late tomorrow and 45 minutes late next week, it's not, it doesn't work when people are trying to get to work. Uh, so so it's, not, it's not meeting their needs. But so looking at all of those things, making sure options are available and, and people can, can move, move around, the livability is, is, a, is something we're focused on. What is your guarantee to Nova Scotians of what a PC government would fix in the first 100 days if re-elected? The pathway for doctors that are working in other jurisdictions to, to, to practice medicine here in this province. So we'll, we'll open up this International Medical Graduate Assessment Clinic. This is a clinic, I call it a, another medical school. Not everyone likes that description, but that's what I call it. This would be for doctors that are practicing in another country mainly United States, Australia, South Africa, and New Zealand. And right now the process can be two years for them to come here. And we all know somebody, a neighbor, a friend, a cousin, whatever, who, who's practicing medicine elsewhere, and they want to come back, but it's hard for them to come back. Uh, to tell somebody it's a, a two-year process to come back is, doesn't fit most people's lifestyle at the point in their career. So this assessment clinic would, would assess their capabilities in 12 weeks. And at the end of 12 weeks, they could, you know, if they pass, they have a license. So this is a really, really important thing for the future of healthcare in this province. We're dealing with the here and now in healthcare, but we also need to be mindful of the future. And so I think between this International Medical Graduate Assessment Clinic and the medical school at Cape Breton University, the medical school at Cape Breton University could produce 30 graduates a year who will practice medicine in Nova Scotia. 
wouldn't it be nice if that was done eight years ago or seven years ago or six years ago? But we're doing it now. And then that coupled with the pathway for, for foreign trained doctors to have their competency tested, that could produce 45 doctors a year. So imagine a world where we have 30 doctors from Cape Breton University and 45 from this International Medical Graduate Assessment Clinic, 75 new, new doctors a year, starts to look a little different. So we're looking to the future, but we're also dealing with the here and now in, in the healthcare file. So that International Medical Graduate Assessment Clinic, that will happen under a re-elected PC government for sure. If given a second term, how can you help small businesses out? I think there's a couple of things that are obviously small businesses are so important to our economy. They're, they're really the heart of many of our communities and we, we turn to them for so much uh, employment for sure, but sponsorship for local teams. And so they're really important to our communities. So I think there's a couple of things with the Nova Scotia loyal program is, is, a, is a program that is focused on buy local and encouraging people to support local businesses. So I think it's a big idea. It's a new idea. Big new ideas are hard, but we're rolling that out. So that will help. That will definitely help small businesses across the province. And and you know over the next little course of the campaign, we've obviously been talking about taxes and lower taxes, lower HST, lower personal income tax for people. Uh, those will help every Nova Scotian. Uh, there's a lot of targeted supports in the province for certain things, but a lot of people are just outside those targeted supports. They miss them. They don't, they don't qualify for anything. So the, the tax cuts, the personal income tax cut, the HST cut, those will get all Nova Scotians. And, and we'll also be talking about small business taxes as well to support small business owners. And the last question, why should Nova Scotians vote for you for this election? Uh, we're putting our trust in, in Nova Scotians during this campaign. Good things are happening in this province. The, the, the health care file is improving. It was a, a big hole, but we're, we're, we're climbing out of it. The, the housing starts are up. Good things are happening there. The uh, potential we, we have in our economy and great, incredible potential in like the hydrogen, the energy file, um, the, the, the critical minerals file, big, big potential for this province and and if you if you think the province is on a good path let's stay on that path and keep keep moving and I ask you to please vote and please get out and support your local pc canada um thank you very much for taking some time out of your busy day to uh, chat with me anytime appreciate it thanks for having me get out and vote everyone pat hilly from the laker news in beaver bank